All right, you want to do the clap for Chris? I think you should. Yeah, do the I'll do it. All right, this is the Art of Photography podcast. Chris Hirschman, Ted <laughs> Forbes. Here we go. And we're rolling. Welcome back, everybody, once again. I, I need Chris. You're gonna have to help me with this because I need a name. This little series I'm doing of like, I want to call it like in studio or studio talk or or I don't know something like that. Um, uh, uh, chit chit chat. Chit, chit, uh, some about chit chat. Oh, chit chat. Chit chat. I like chit chat. Chit chatting with Chris Hirschman is what it is today. Chit chat. I like it. Was coffee talks already taken? That was the famous SNL. Yeah, but I need to introduce no, I, you. People are looking at you, going, "Who is this guy? Why? Why is he here?" There is a reason. There's a method to our madness. This, ladies and gentlemen, is my dear friend, Mr. Chris Hirschman, who is one of the greats. I think most of you would probably know him as one of the prestigious Nikon ambassadors, which he is. But uh, he and I met, I guess, a couple of years ago when we were in Florida. Yeah, we were in Orlando. We were in Orlando. cameras. And you and I kind of hit it off. I remember doing a, an interview with you using a GoPro. Okay. We've got some live Moroccan music in the background. We do, yeah. Because we're in Marrakesh right now. Morocco. <laughs> yep. We sat down. We had a good talk. Uh, we were in Epcot uh, yeah. in Morocco. And we were Morocco. test shooting. <laughs> Morocco. <laughs> uh, and we were test shooting uh, the Z6. We were. And yeah. uh, our, our equally dry senses of humor were, were combining in a way that was, uh, you know, unparalleled, I think, historically. And, and so we were like, we we're going to be friends. And you actually mentioned to me on that trip, I don't know if you remember this, I'm sure you do, is that uh, we need to collaborate this year on something because we got along. And I said, yes, we will. And we never did. And now we have the situation where we're all at home. And I thought, what better person to actually follow through on this collaboration with than Chris? Because you guys are going to find him fascinating. Um, we bonded because we both not only shoot stills, video, but we also have this music connection in common. And mm. I remember you were telling me, you're going to have to expand on this. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but the whole thing sure, sure. in Chicago, I'll, I'm going to let you take it. This Was was this your first intro into professional work? Um, so, yeah, I, I was... Um working in music retail first okay with photography as a hobby ah. and um i it just came to a point where photography and filmmaking was making more money and so i stepped out of the music retail world and then three months after being freelance i had um a competitor of my retailer um ask me if i could join their music store as a filmmaker and then I went on to help grow uh, a YouTube channel, which has well over 100,000 subscribers for um, Chicago Music Exchange. It's the big one. And then we also created a very prominent uh, online um, you know, resource for selling and trading used musical equipment called Reverb.com, which I'm sure every musician knows. Um, and so through the use of video, I was kind of cutting my teeth in um, trying to create better videos there while also creating music videos for my buddies, my artists that I'm friends with. And it all kind of happened at once where I was trying to leave the music retail world but got back into it, but in the world that I wanted to be, which is the visual art side of things. Um, and since then we've created, you know, videos like 100 riffs which is a gentleman playing guitar non-stop without stopping and he plays 100 guitar riffs in a row uh through you know uh, chronologically chronologically written um and that has 36 million views you know and at the That's same so awesome. time i i ran into a band called the alabama shakes and uh, that was early on and you know me using nikons to film live music performances and they used the video that I recorded for them um, to debut their new album, which came out in like the next week. I saw their album in the front of Starbucks when I was getting my coffee. I was like, I just filmed that band. <laughs> and then they used that video. Now that video is them playing live in a studio and it's probably, you know, 38 million views or something like that. Well, that that's a huge band now. Were they anybody back when you when you did that original video? Or They were playing that evening that I filmed them um, at a place called The Hideout, which maxes out at maybe 300 people. Yeah. The next time they came through Chicago, they headlined Lollapalooza. Oh, wow. Amazing. So you're talking about, you know, uh, exposure for the for this band was just like, 
I was on the I was riding the coattails of you know their success, and you know my video was helping them be you know shown to the world because if you know Brittany Howard, um, the front man of Alabama Shakes, she's unbelievable. Her voice is raw and ridiculous. <laughs> And when you, you connect it with your eyes, you see her perform, that's where the the real magic of that band is. And um, yeah, I was happy to be a part of that, man. So that's kind of how it started for me. That that was the beginning then of your career, so to speak. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We, we, we've talked about this, just you and I, but I want to bring it up here again, because I think that's one of the things that I find really interesting about you is like you're of your time in the sense that you know, we have tools that have come along, and, and I've talked about it with, with Chris and Jordan from DP Review, too, that, you know, like the Canon 5D Mark II, which was groundbreaking, because all of a sudden you could you had a camera that would shoot really good stills and really good video. And that opened the doors for a lot of people, and your career really rolled along with that. Uh, did you start as a still shooter or more of a video guy, or how did, like, how did the crossover begin? Yeah, you know, in high school, I wanted to go to college to be a photographer, so I convinced my parents, um, you know, if they buy me a camera, I'll go to school for photography. At the time, I wanted to record bands and go to Full Sail, and that was just really expensive. Um, so I was like, well, I'll go to college for photography, thinking that was any cheaper. Um, and, you know, uh, school at Columbia in Chicago was ridiculous. So, but I, I had the camera, so I joined... Yeah. Um, uh, yearbook and shot the yearbook and then was doing wedding portraits and then senior portraits whatever I could come up with and then you know playing in bands I just started to shift my focus toward music and as a lot of people do when you first get into photography is you kind of focus on what's around you most yep. and that was music for me so that's where music kind of stayed the the center focus of all of my work the sad part about that and sorry to be doom and gloom here the times that no. we're in now uh, I mean, this has had uh, a colossally disastrous effect on the music industry. And so I'm sure you know a lot of people. You can't perform live right now. I mean, that that's... Mm. And I've heard musician friends of mine say, you know, unfortunately, this is going to be the last thing to recover. Like way down the road, like maybe even conferences have a shot before putting people into a club to hear music. And it's, it's awful. It's... That's such a... I mean, for you and I both, that's a big part of like what we like and what drives us creatively and I think that you know it's it's unfortunate has that affected you a lot in the downtime here or is... yeah you know obviously a lot of my summer work are festivals um, I do a lot of film documentary with bands and musicians their right. journeys their tours so um, you know I'm kind of just taking approach to start over in new interest and like right now, I'm building, I'm rebuilding and restoring a 1973 Honda CB750 motorcycle. <laughs> That's a mouthful. It's like the Red Rider BB gun. But this is um, a reason people should follow you on Instagram because I've been watching this. It's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so I've kind of been like, all right, well, I'm shifting my focus toward what's around me. Right. And right now that happens to be rebuilding this bike and I am doing it with my father. So there are times that I can photograph processes that are happening um and so i'm 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 doing high shutter speed stuff i'm doing time cool. lapse it's all in low light you know so i'm challenged in a new way and i'm also using the z50 so that i can kind of get a real good feel for how the files hold up yeah um people always ask me how's the camera and i'm like it's great i mean i love it for but i haven't really tested it real hard until now, and so now I can firmly, you know, um, stand behind the, its quality and um, not just its ergonomics, because I liked how small it was. You right. Know? A lot of people, I mean, I have friends that I talk to, and, and I've struggled with this myself too, with, with what you do during unplanned downtime, like what we're having right now. And unfortunately, I'm old enough to have remembered several other <laughs> economic recessions. And you know, and you worry about it going in. But, uh, you know, I, what I can say, though, is that like, this is the perfect time to take care of stuff that you don't have time to do when you're running and gunning and shooting and busy. So if it's learning a new camera or understanding what it's going to give you in the end or like exploring the whole thing with the motorcycle, I think that's like that's the best thing you can be doing right now, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been reading nonstop. Yeah. I re I've been I take like uh, the very first half of my day and I just do reading and inspiration and writing 
Cool. And, you know, that is just such such a luxury to have right now. And it's most, um, it, it seems like probably one of the hardest things to get when we're in full motion. So I'm trying to take full advantage of that. And I am also watching master classes and uh, trying my best to come up with, you know, you know, new goals, Yeah. you know, uh, and it's hard to, you know, write out a goal based off of what might not happen, but, um, may or may not happen with the reopening of the economy. But I found that it's good to just kind of, um, take a look at the progress that we've done in the last couple of years. Think about the purpose, you know, we have with our careers and what kind of impact we want to have moving forward. Uh, and again, this is just, you know, something that I've, been struggling to get to when things in full motion so hopefully people are doing that and if they're not that's fine too you know at the very beginning it was not very productive i was like well if the gym's open i'm gonna go but if it's not then i'm not <laughs> gonna work out because if i don't work out while the gym's open i'm gonna feel sluggish but i'll you know right. this is the only time i'm gonna give myself a break there so i'm exercising my mind um and just kind of shifting around you know, actually, I, I'm glad you brought that up because in, in doing the videos that I do on YouTube, like I get questions from people a lot. And one of the most asked questions, whether we're in a strange time like this or not, is, you know, people get into creative ruts and, and trying to get out of that. And I think one of the things that's, I mean, I'm lucky to be in a position where I get to talk to incredible people like yourself and, and others who, you know, just to hear their uh, spin on how they get reinvigorated creatively or inspired creatively. And a lot of times it's not like uh, what my next move is going to be, what I want to do. You know, I don't really know what that is, but like you're talking about taking the morning to read and expand your mm -hmm. mind doing that. One idea can lead to another so often, and that can like end up yielding something that's really incredible in the end that you wouldn't have come up with just sitting around worrying. So, you know, there's this thing about re-triggering um, that aspect in your brain that is looking for new ideas and yes. um, triggering that motivation area in your mind. And, um, you know, you can, for, for me, like after watching a masterclass with Ron Howard and talking about scripts, you know, like that's <laughs> not something I focus on a lot. But now when I go in to watch the normal shows that I typically watch, I'm seeing the things that he was talking about. I'm, you know, re-motivated um, and looking at the same thing I always look at, but with a different lens. And I think maybe now's a good time to find ways to re-examine the things that we're already experiencing and try to find um, and look at it in a different light and find a way to motivate that, you know, to do something different that we want to do. So now I'm, you know, hmm. looking more into scripts and, yeah. you know, thinking more about how my pieces have an effective storytelling element and the flow of it. And, um, you know, I, I think it's important to find that inspiration. And for me, it's just been through reading and then applying that reading and then constantly all day being in that bit of mindset. And then your brain starts to take over. Your brain will start to look for those ideas and then things will just pop into your head because you've been thinking and meditating on it all day. Right, so right. a lot of what I feel like I'm doing in this time is meditation, meditating on the things that I want um, or the things that I want to clear up in my um, goals or um, the projects that I'm working on um, you know, I'll read something and then I'll reapproach it. Um, some of the photos I'm editing, you know, I, I will, you know, a lot of the photos I've been sending for retouching if the, you know, background is extremely difficult to, you know, edit and I'm taking the time to see how simple other people do that. And then I do that. I replicate what they're doing and then I am re-inspired to you know, continue to work on past photos because I've gained this new skill. So I, if we can gain one or two more new skills in this time, and then maybe apply that, I think we'll we'll just start to grow and feel like we're constantly growing in this tough time. And I think that's you know the best we can hope for right now. And I oh, think that's you know, fine. I think it, 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 to try to be uh, inspiring about this. Um, I, I think that's what people have to understand. You, it, it, we're we're going to come out of this, and like what we do now has an impact. If you just want to, 
I don't know. It's really easy to 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 go down a, a darkness spiral because that's what media and everything else gives you, and even social media tends to do that. Or if you turn this around, because some people are going to do it, and it could be you, it could be me, it could be somebody watching this, and understanding that now is the time to improve my own skill set, what I'm doing. It's time to get excited about the work I'm making, and it's hard to do, but finding a way to make that happen, you're going to come out the other end in a much different place, you know. Um, yeah. I, you know, and I think it's also interesting because you mentioned masterclass, and I, I I don't know if you told me that before or not. I think that's the first time you mentioned that. Are, how are you liking that? Is it cool? I I love it. Um, to I'm get, dying to do it, but you know, to get that uh, intimate into some of these really creative people's minds, it's almost like they're a personal mentor to you. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I I make those types of films, you know. Yeah. Um, for the photography and film community, you know, like I follow Joe McNally around and I try, you know, or I've done a series with him on his process and, you know, explaining his process to um, achieving the looks and his images. So just and to back so, up, what was the Joe McNally project? You did a full thing where you, you was it a series of videos that were instructional in nature? That um, they were inspirational and instructional. Okay. Um, and it was to kind of debut some new gear, some new mirrorless equipment, some new lenses, and show how Joe shoots in the field. It was called Performers okay. by Joe McNally, and it's a five-part series, and I followed him from Vegas, Chicago to New York, and, wow. you know, just getting into his mindset and following around a living legend, mm -hmm. you know, how do you... Um, not just prepare your equipment, but prepare your mind. And then also, how do you behave? How do you, how do you interact with your subjects? And those were the moments I was trying to capture. And if you go back and watch that series, I think we did a really good job at creating something that's inspirational and educational, but entertaining. Yeah. Um, it's the trifecta. I mean, it, that's the deal. It's like, if you're not, if you're watching us and you're not familiar with Joe McNally, I don't know what rock you've been under, but get out and you've got to <laughs> see it. So, Joe's incredible. I saw him do a workshop years ago and he, that's how he is. I, I'll let you talk to this too, because you know him, but as a person, he's very inspirational. He's, he, he's very approachable. Um, he happens to be an incredible photographer. So it's very inspiring in the end. Your job as a filmmaker is to bring that out. And to yeah. kind of take the lead on that, and I, I, I need to go watch the project because I think that would be, uh, that would it's be. It's really great. Cool. You, you know, the one thing that I took away is that that man has a heart for what he's doing and the people he's doing it with. Yeah. Um. It just bleeds through his work, and when you follow him around, the way he carries himself, talks to people, he cares about people, he cares about the work. Um, and he, he's just unbelievable in how he's able to simplify what looks like a very complicated image. Mm. Um, that's, that's why I think he's a great teacher, a great communicator is he's able to express those thoughts, but he also tells us why we should care, you know, right. and there's not a lot of people telling us really why we should care. I think they're telling us how to get it done. But I think Joe's really great at, at breaking down why we're trying to go through all this trouble to create this image. And that's what I really appreciate about Joe's work and um, his message in the world. So, And then you actually ha you have kind of a special thing because you actually asked him if he would be your mentor at one point. Which... I did. Yeah. Yeah. I consider Joe to be a mentor in my life. Um, you know, I asked him to spend you know, a, a minimum of, of 10 minutes a month on the phone with me. <laughs> and, um, you know, out of respect for his time, sure. um, I also am very conscious of what it is I want to talk about in those times. So it's kind of like a real quick, like press meeting, yeah. a lot of questions. And he's just so generous to give me that information. But him and I built that relationship. We actually have the same birthday. Oh, really? Which is really crazy. <laughs> um, and when I was filming him, we have some similar mannerisms. I'm, I'm like, I, it's hard to not think of like me years from now and what Joe's doing. And um, I just thought he was an appropriate, you know, mentor, uh, you know, a fellow, a fellow uh, Nikon ambassador. And I think, you know, in my reading, I found that you should find people who are where you want to be and you should 
you know, ask them to be your mentor and ask them questions about how to get there. I think that's the simplest way sure. of getting to where you want to go. And so I'm just trying to, you know, um, you know that's a, that's actually that. something that a lot of people, and you know, we've both in similar lines of work, um, especially within the photo industry and the photo community, is I think that's something that people don't put a lot of emphasis on is this whole notion of, uh, of mentorship and always being in a place. I mean, I feel like I'm here um, and I know you are. But I want to learn more. I want to improve my skill set. I want to get better. I don't think I've arrived at anything. And there, there seems to be a thread that, that can go through the photo community. And I think it's because it's competitive. It's, I mean, there's a number of reasons why. Uh, the business has changed a lot over the years. People who've been in a long time tend to sour on that. And, and it's really easy to become, I think, a little bit jaded. And it's not that it, it, the ego's taken over. I mean, that could happen. But I'm just talking about just in general is losing that sense of discovery or that wanting to be the student and finding somebody to do that with. And a lot of people will yeah. look at the whole notion of a mentor it has this word where it's like, okay, I'm going to come, you'll be the sensei and I'll come over to your house and spend all my time and you will show me the, and that's really most people like are going to freak out if you want, <laughs> but I like your idea of the 10 minutes a month on the phone and you condense that down and think about it. And I think one, I'm sure that tells Joe that you're serious because you're thinking about it. Uh, but I yeah. think that's strong, man, because a lot of people don't do that and they don't see the value in what you can glean from somebody else. It's a respecting, you know, it's it's amazing. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. I think it's um, you got to be intentional about, you know, what you want to get done. Yeah. And um, that's that's definitely part of it is learning from others along the lines of mentorship. Uh, we had talked recently about this and, and this is fascinating. This is a really interesting time to be alive in that. I mean, my gosh, the people at Zoom talk about being in the right place at the right time, right? We have oh, yeah. this software that all of a sudden everyone needs. Or if you were one of the last people to be producing a webcam in the last year, they've all sold out. And, and the whole notion of we have this sense of isolation, but where the internet has matured now, there's a lot you can do with video in the education space, which is fascinating. And you're working on some projects I know right now. Do you want to talk a little bit about those? Is it too premature? Yeah, or? No, 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 no. Okay. Um, you know, I, I've got stuff that we're in conversations with. A lot of Nikon ambassadors are already in full motion doing classes with um, independent retailers. And I think it's really great actually to see, um, uh, you know, education, um, happen through these retailers yes. and i think that's you know a great place for it to happen um and it helps everybody out you mm -hmm. know so I, i'm looking forward to um you know uh, as an ambassador I, I speak a lot i go out and educate and do workshops and classes and a lot of that's been put online which i love so yeah. a lot of the retailers that i have done in-person classes with you know we're just now going back through and doing online courses so um, you will see some classes come up here soon, so stay tuned. Um, but I think, you know, I watched um, a few classes and, and got a lot out of it yeah. and was instantly inspired, learned something new, tried, tried out new camera techniques. And, you know, I, I know Nikon ambassadors have been putting out some two-minute tips here and there. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'm learning, you know, really basic stuff about what their rule of thumb is yeah. you know people can say you know what you can do you know you need to have this or that set to have you know a high shutter speed uh but andrew hancock was just like you know go in your backyard and just rule of thumb you know hit two thousandth um one two thousandth of a second or higher it capture your slow motion and it's just like that's what he does. That's what I'm going to start doing. Easy enough. That's that's my new rule of thumb. You know, I, I was sitting in class with Dixie Dixon. She said, I I don't shoot below a, um, 1 250th of a second just to make sure that I, you know, yeah. have a, a, a really, you know, sharp image. And I was like, that's my new rule of thumb, you know. <laughs> so there's these simple things that we can learn. Um, and I'm excited to, you know, to share things about what I do with filmmaking and these cameras yeah. on the video side of things that I have rules of, of thumbs that I want to share with people. Um, you, know, you gave me several that... before we started recording about audio. We, I mean, you know, we're just having to be on FaceTime. He's setting up. We're getting ready to record. And I was like, how do you capture your audio signal? And you gave me some gold advice. I'm not going to share it because it's... Yeah, <laughs> we're going to say that you have to take the class. Um, and you'll, you'll bestow that on someone else. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, there's a lot, and I really feel for. Here's my stance on education, uh, both online and in person. My where I feel like I fit in the edu education realm um, right. for, you know, filmmaking is, you know, I learned a lot of this on my own, mm -hmm. and so I'm here to help people elevate their production, and whether they've seen this tip or trick or whatever, it's 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 worked for me. I have an example of how to you know, do it and hopefully people can go out and try to replicate that for themselves. And it's, you know, very rewarding and encouraging and inspiring when you, you try something out, it worked, and then you build on that. So it's all about just building our tool tools uh, and our tricks in our bag, right? Yeah. We got to fill our bag so that when we approach a job or a gig, we like, I've seen this before, I know what to do, pull it out of the bag, use that tool. Yeah, you know, it's funny you're mentioning this too because to dovetail into what we were talking about with education, I, I don't know if people realize now, but like there's a whole industry of the idea of being able to do things remote now. Like you watch the, the five o'clock news at night, the weather guy's remoting in with no pants. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But my point is, is that, you know, there are people who and I was somebody I wish I could remember who it is but I'm just going to paraphrase this they were tweeting about this the other day because this particular individual was doing some consulting work with big companies that are saying how are we going to get message out now if we're not going to have a convention or a conference or whatever in the next year let's say and no. they all start mentioning things they've seen because they assume online easy and masterclass comes up all the time and, you know, what people don't realize is, okay, you've seen the ads for Masterclass. You, you remember it because the celebrities that they use in that. What you don't know is that Masterclass probably films to the tune of a quarter of a million dollars every 30 minutes. I mean, those are expensive productions, you know. Those are very well done. They're very um, well done, and I'm not slamming them at all. But my point is, is there is going to be a need for stuff that's not quite in the Netflix budget realm. We're not, we don't have to pay Gordon Ramsay necessarily, but we also need a camera crew that can come in and we will spend money on this. But it's, you know, I mean, there there's going to be a need for that, I, I think, on the whole. And we have tools now. I mean, you remember... When you were a kid, and same for me, it's like I wanted to do video, and it was prohibitively expensive back then. Like, yeah, there was no the only way to edit was to like get a studio to go do it in at one point, and like a, just a camera that wasn't even like what you could do with the depth of field on a DSLR would be like twenty five grand. It was expensive, and but that's where the world we're in now, and things have changed. And uh, yeah, it's exciting. it's never been more affordable. And what's even better is I feel like the workflow is caught up to something that is actually actually um makes sense you know there was a time where you'd film on your your um your camcorder and yeah. then you'd have to you know digitize that footage yep. and you'd have to play it back in real time shot to tape and then you'd have to cut and it then you'd and have to detail us in it's man it was it was uh, a long hard process and now we're just putting a card in you know the atomos makes it even more simple you can even flag things that you like i know and, it's crazy um, you can use the lots. technology can, yeah. is amazing. So. Well, you know, another thing too with the music thing is like we have things now that we didn't have 10, 20 years ago. I won't date us beyond yeah. that. But, uh, you know, can you imagine though, like you're talking about when you do the documentary stuff where you follow a band around like, you know, summer festival, right? There were no behind the scenes on the bands that, and if they were, it was some weird janky bootleg that you had to buy out of like, you know, this bin on the street somebody would be selling with a booth or something you know we didn't have those things and now we do it was either that or more uh martin scorsese you know who's making a doc <laughs> yep. on a band and then you're like wow and he made Dude, some he great did, stuff though he made some great docs i i love that guy i love that he can go from making mob films to oh my you know um he, he's just he's he's really talented and diverse did you ever um, see the uh the one that he did on, with his parents I can't think I of the name of it. It's it's early and it's like a crew of like one guy, but it's shooting on 16 mil. So I mean, it's a big camera and he's just sitting yeah. there interviewing his parents and they're going back and forth like an old Italian couple. She shows you how to make meatballs at one point. It's like a 15 minute film. You, you can find it on YouTube, but it's, but it's that yeah. whole thing of telling a story. And I was going to ask you when you do the band stuff, um, yeah. where you're following them around, you kind of have license to just document that using your voice right i mean you don't really get a lot of art direction i mean it might depend i don't know how does that work typically you know i think uh where i'm at in a place is um people trust me to capture their moments 
and then they don't have the footage and the people that I'm reporting to are not the band. They're the band's management. Okay. And the band's management wasn't there. You uh. know? So <laughs> it's up to me to tell the story of that day or that moment. Right. Um you know, sometimes I am just passing off footage and they're telling the story that they want to tell. But I like to be in a position where I get to tell the story that I think was really there. And being a musician, that's, that's you know, what I think makes uh, it for me is like, or maybe helps me get hired more often is the fact that I am a musician. Right. I see it through the lens of a musician. And I want to tell the things or capture the things that maybe people might not understand is important. Yeah. You know, that a musician might pick pick up and vice versa. You know, I can see it from um, as a director, as somebody who maybe musicians see this all the time and may not think that that's special, but it's unusual. People don't get to see it. Mm -hmm. People don't get to see the green room moment mm -hmm. right before bands take the stage. They don't get to see how the band warms up and prepares themselves. And sometimes there's really magical moments. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of magic that happens around the day of a performance or in the studio um, that people don't get to see. And I, I love seeing that stuff. I love seeing how bands write songs in the studio and record. So, you know, I just like to have a good connection with bands, make them feel comfortable and, you know, not force things, just be there to, to really capture what's happening. Cause what's happening is, is typically pretty special, but you want to shove them in the good light. Yeah. You want to, you know, you want to, you want to film them in the good light, you know, literally. And, um, you also want to tell a good story. You well, know, it seems so. like in general, you, I, I don't know everything, obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, but you tend to work with people who you like. I mean, they're your favorite bands, right? I would say more often than not, I'm working with friends Yeah. Um, in the music industry. And I, I played in bands. I toured in bands. So, um, you know, like Switchfoot was a band that I toured with before I ever, like, went to go work for them as a filmmaker. That's cool. Um, you you know, were in the band. No, no, no. I, okay. I was I was in a band that was opening for the lead singer's side project. Okay, well, seriously, so yeah, I, it was family. You, you know, know, yeah. You know, point the music industry is kind to the people that they work with and meet, and you become family, and you help yeah. each other out. And these bands that you tour with, they will later on tour with other bands and talk highly, and you know, so. I, I like that I'm able to leverage the connections from all my years playing music and now to come back in a different light but still leverage those connections. And I think people can really take a look at whatever career they had before filmmaking and photography and think about how can I leverage the people I you know, made great connections with in the previous career and maybe leverage that because there's probably some type of you know, um, you're just further along the, the, the path and the route to knowing what is actually worth capturing if you're yeah. going back to, to those things. I think that's that's fantastic. And it's, it's something that I think, especially when I get uh, people who are typically younger, either in age or in their career, that watch my videos and I'll get asked those questions. And it, it, sometimes they're really broad. Like yesterday when I did that live thing at Fort Worth Camera for Instagram, somebody said, you know what, I'm, I'm starting my photography business. What advice would you give me? And I thought, wow, that's a broad question because I don't, especially in a live chat, I don't know anything more about it. And full disclosure, I don't, I make my living making content for YouTube and other things. So I'm in photography, but I don't make my living as a photographer. So it's really hard for me to feel like I'm somebody who can advise somebody. But I think no matter what your career is, whether it's what you do or whether it's what somebody like me does, um, cause I'd say this for myself too. It's like, you're a culmination of a lot of things that either happened by circumstance or that you went after or oftentimes a combination of both that lead you to where you are now. And so just yeah. saying, I'm going to flip a switch and, 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 and sometimes it feels like that in your life where you quit a job to do something. There's a leap of faith. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, that's, it's something that I think a lot of people just need to like be more patient with understanding. And I think that like, you're the perfect example of that. Cause like, I mean, I look at you and it's like, I think a lot of people like you have the dream career, man. You're like doing music, you're making videos. It's like, uh, I was gonna say you have long hair, but you don't now. I have Corona I hair. You don't. 
<laughs> I I don't know. It's all under a hat. You it's, reeled it in. <laughs> I had I've always had really long hair, and I cut it off uh, because I was working out a lot, and it just seemed uh, to be uh, getting in the way a lot. And I <laughs> you I feel like Fabio I'll tell you or true, something. <laughs> uh, I, I truly um, this is a true story. Back in um, early two thousands, maybe mid two thousands, uh, I went to Nam. Okay. Which is, um, you know, a, the National a Association show. of Music Merchants. It's Thank the you. big yeah. one, yeah. And I went to shadow some. This um, would be like some, Photokina for music. For music yes. retail, yes. Right. So I went there and I, I saw all these dudes with just like, they looked like they were still in the band and they just had a hard time letting go of that. And they probably have that look for 40 years. Uh, I know. <laughs> and I was just like, I got, I, I don't want to be that guy. I don't no. want to be that guy. I want to be able to reset and, and um, not be uh, classified by other people, but also for me to reclassify myself. So I'll grow it out and then I'll chop it off and I'll grow it out and I'll chop it off. But there's, uh, there's just a, as a discipline there. Well, there's a spinal tap syndrome that must be avoided, I think, with anything. And I, I, I sadly will admit that there was a point in my life where I used to have really long hair, believe it or not, before it was falling out. And, uh, yeah, the day I cut it, it, it was it was time. You know, you, you can't. And every now and then I'll run into somebody from high school or something because I went to an arts high school and did music there. Yeah. And they, it's like they're just in a time vacuum, man. It's like they're still trying. To, I, there's this guy I knew who's a drummer. And this is going to date me severely, but he had like tried out for Ingve Malmsteen's band or something. And he's still playing metal, still has the hair, and he's looking like there's some mileage. And I'm like, oh man, you can't. No, it's okay to look Dude. your age. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, and and there's, you know, what's really beautiful about the world and people is that you know we all have these deep rooted interests and they're so small. And so there's so many subcategories of interest and people who are in it. And, um, uh, I love that community. And I actually started filming some bands that use you know, some eighties metal bands. I filmed a band called accept. I don't know. If oh, you're familiar do I with know? Accept. Am Balls I familiar? to the wall. Yes. With the little German guy, the singer, they're yeah. all German. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. Y you know, I got to meet those guys and, uh, a lot of those folks, <laughs> are still really in that but they are also doing really well at evolving and keeping their own look and new brands going so i i do want to say that i don't think 80s hair metal is <laughs> is dated i feel like i need to clear some air i really love that community understood, understood. i've done some great work there but um, there, there are some people who like you said like certain bands certain individuals they, they can kind of like keep the mojo going, right? You know, like here's yeah. an example. Look at Mick Jagger, you know, from the Stones. When they were on uh, the Super Bowl well, more than a few years ago now, and I watched it, and it was the year after Prince, and that's a hard act to follow, right? In fact, yeah. I don't think it's ever been as good as that night. But the yeah. Stones were next, and they get up, and they sounded really bad, I thought. They were not tight. It was not like what you'd expect. But can those guys put on a show? And Mick's like in his 70s now. And he looks Dude, great. How that guy's still alive, I don't know. Nobody I don't know, knows. but he 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 still has a way of entertaining. He doesn't have the '60s haircut, you know. I mean, he's he's yeah. he's modern Mick, you know. Dude, he is so fascinating to read and watch. Uh, I don't. I read it. I read his autobiography, and um, it it blew me away. I got really into him as an individual, and then just seeing him in films and how he. Um, lives life he, that that guy would be probably one of my favorite people to document and follow for a oh, day. Oh, can you imagine? It'd be amazing, you know. Yeah. It's uh yeah, and and that's the other thing. I mean, you know, you have to look at like I did my artist series stuff a couple of years ago because like, you know, not to be dark again, but it's like he won't be around forever. And so like, you know, mm -hmm. that whole idea of being able to document, that's why that stuff's important, you know? And uh yeah. maybe you don't get Mick, but you've got the other bands that you've done and and it adds there's a reason why we do stuff, right? You know, it's that exploring, oh, yeah. you know, so. We're, we're trying to, um, you know, tell stories. That's yeah. part of humanity. The, uh, the human experience is, um, you know, sharing the story, sharing feelings, creating emotions and um, challenging people through stories. You know, yeah. that's. Well, um, and, and I think because of that, like a good story can make a topic that 
typically wouldn't appeal to somebody. Like I've gotten into stuff too. Uh, like when Netflix like became a thing, it's like I remember Chef's Table. I wasn't interested in cooking, and that was so well told, it was so well done that all of a sudden it's a topic that didn't mean much to me until I saw that, and then I get it. You know. Oh my gosh! Talk about taking a cooking show to the next level. Right. I was addicted and hungry the entire time. <laughs> you talk about Chef's Table. Chef's Table was just like it's so groundbreaking. Good. So good. Which I think is proof that there's still there's still um, room for originality in everything that we can do and want to do. If you can if you can reinvent a cooking show, yeah. Um, and you know, there's so many awesome food related shows uh, out there right now. It blows my mind, and so it gives me encouragement that there's there will always be more room to share inspirational stories documentaries music videos so whenever you hit that wall in your career or in your field just know that there's room to do something fresh something new yeah and it's up to us to to keep that freshness in our filmmaking and in our storytelling i think that's very important and of course that's the challenge because like when you when i was growing up cooking shows were like justin wilson julia child they they were usually some kind of daytime how to kind of youtube -ish, yeah. you know but 30 minutes long videos of somebody making something and and you know they, there was such a formula that a cooking show it has to be this and to come to take anything like that and break it wide open is it, it takes somebody intending to do that because it's not a natural thing to do, I suppose. You think, oh, yeah. I wouldn't touch that with a pole because I don't like that format or whatever, but somebody did it, and uh, Chef's Table's proof of that, you know? That's exactly it, man. Chris, one other thing that I want to bring up is the whole Nikon ambassadorship thing, and that's a question that I know you probably get a lot. How do I become a Nikon ambassador? I, because I think you have this fascinating career that's kind of evolved. How did that evolve for you? Yeah, yeah. So what happened was I started filming on the, the Nikon D300S, which was one of the first introductions to video for Nikon. Right. And um, I, I, I actually ran into a Nikon professional service member at um, my, my drum shop that I was working at in Chicago, and he was supervising a video shoot for Sandro. Oh, wow. And... I told him, I said, hey man, I just got, you know, this camera, I'm shooting video on it. Can I share it with you? And, you know, how, how can I get it to you? And so I started sending my stuff to him and then he introduced me to more local Nikon affiliated folks. And then sooner than later, you know, because Nikon was curious to see what people are making with their cameras, right. you know, um, my films were circulated around corporate. At, like at the very beginning ages wow. of, of the Nikon DSLR cinema craze. And I was strong with my subjects, which was music and music videos. And so they asked me if I wanted to write about some of my experiences. So it first started off with contributing to some blogs for Nikon. And then it came into testing out new gear and being assigned a project. And then it turned into speaking at NAB in Vegas and doing trade shows. And then I, I remember, you know, speaking with other ambassadors and I was like, what's this ambassador program? You know, <laughs> I, I always kind of felt like an ambassador. So I was like, how do I get dubbed? You know? Yeah. So I sat down with, um, I've become a made man. How do I, <laughs> yeah, exactly. How do I earn my stripes? That's right. <laughs> um, and I sat down and I said, listen, I, I want to be involved in this, in this, um, how do I get there? And, you know, I, I'll never forget this conversation. They said, Chris, I think what you're doing is fantastic, and I'm glad you're expressing your interest. I think you're on your way to becoming that. What we would like to see is for you to continue growing your career and to make a career for yourself. Wow. And through that, you can then share stories that can help people relate and grow and inspire. And I... I said thank you. I kept it as a goal, but I never made that the thing my my entire purpose. Right, I just right. continued growing in the back my of your knowledge. mind. Right. Yeah. I just kept growing my knowledge and kept saying yes to the opportunities that felt like they were right for me. Mm -hmm. And I said no to the things that I didn't think were right for me. And I really stayed in my lane and decided that I was going to make this a career for myself. 
And after, you know, doing exactly that after many years and many projects, many collaborations with Nikon, it was never like they just met me, saw my work, liked it and signed me up. It, it's a relationship. Like um, we were talking, you know, Nikon is a very small group of yes. people. Um, they just do camera imaging, you know, and they're very very into that thing and they get to know you and so i grew an intimate relationship with them for i mean we've been working together for like 10 years now right so we go back a long ways and out of nowhere they were just like I, it's time you know we're gonna sign on new ambassadors and you're on our list that's like, cool we would love for you to to do this you've grown your your company you're independently ran you worked very hard and we feel like you have great um stories to tell that can help other people and so i love sharing what i've learned and i think that's part of the ambassador program in fact it is you know sure. it's to inspire educate uh motivate and um mentor people mm -hmm. and so that is also part of the nikon ambassadorship it's not just be the best photographer and be the best we're, right you know we're great I don't, there's really amazing people out there. I wouldn't say we're the absolute best of what we do, but we, we do all share that common thread of, we want to help people. We want to help inspire. And so that's part of what we love to do as ambassadors. And that's kind of the heart of an ambassador. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm here. And in fact, I created a course that is online for free right now. It's usually $40, but because of the mm -hmm. um, closures, um, they've opened it up for free for anyone who wants to partake. This class is available online um, for free, and it's an hour-long master class of how to create videos from one camera, adding multiple cameras to big film crews, and I try my best to break it down um, and, and make it entertaining educational and motivating <laughs> so i hope people can go check that out and be motivated and um i'm also giving tips on instagram chris hirschman at chris hirschman and my website chris .com, has got my full portfolio of work awesome and i will when when your new educational stuff comes out i'll update the i'll pin a comment below and i'll put a link to the nikon thing too so That'd chris great. thank you so much i'm so glad we finally got to do this and i hope you guys enjoyed it Chris is one of my favorites, and I'm glad that we had the opportunity to meet and become friends. Thank you. We'll catch you Thank guys. Thank you in for the next having video. me. All right, yeah, definitely, man. See y'all next it. time. Later. <laughs>